December um, Joint Economic Community Development Board meeting to order. Um, any public comment? Gwen, you got any public comment? No? Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> approval of the minutes of the August 5th meeting. Entertain a motion. So moved. Here's our member it word for word from August 5th. Mm -hmm. Here's a second. Second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Um, all right. The, you've got in front of you the amended interlocal agreement that City Council and County Commission adopted. Um, just a few, there are a few changes in it. Um, the membership of the board and composition of the executive committee were changed. The um, Let's see, also uh, the administrative, um, well first let's look at item 10 under budgets and also under 9, nine and 10 funding and budgets uh, there was verbiage change um, in regard to uh, what the, the monies could be uh, spent for. Then the administrative duties, item number 11, is a new paragraph and it basically designates the Chamber of Commerce and its uh, economic development staff as the administrative staff for the board. And pretty much everything else is, is the same. So that's for, in, for information, it was passed by City, and city Council and County Commission. Um, let's see, election of officers for 2020, calendar year, is that right, Marshall? Uh, I think fiscal, fiscal year. Fiscal year. Yeah. So this would be for 2021, starting July, or is the fiscal year for this body calendar year? No, and the interlocal agreement is said fiscal year. So I guess because we were operating under the old interlocal, we were going to redo the officers okay. essentially for the for the remainder of this fiscal year okay so the officers are for january 1 through june 30 of 20. yeah is that correct or now or now until yeah, december second yeah. through june 30. Yeah. okay 20. remind me who have been serving as officers in the past it was jack fishman as chair Gary Chesney and Mayor Britton as vice chairs, and then Marshall as secretary. Under the, the new agreement, is that each of those positions still eligible to hold the, that office? There's no conflict, is there? No, not that I know of. Make a motion that slate of officers be, be nominated. Second. <clears throat> we have a motion to second any discussion on the officers for. Today through June 30 of 2020. All in favor say aye. 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 I'm opposed. Okay, you have um, in front of you the meetings for the board, which are let's see, quarterly, and the um, executive committee, which have to be what, eight times a year, is that right? But it's every, every month. Yes, executive is eight, eight times. times. Yeah, and we just went through the remainder of the fiscal year uh, okay. on the calendar as okay. well. All right, entertain a motion that the schedule be approved. So moved. Have a motion to your second? Second. Have a second. Any discussion? It's the first Monday of every every month for yes. the executive committee, right? At eight at eight thirty. Yes. It doesn't have a time. Oh, no, it does sorry. at the bottom. No, it does at the bottom. I'm sorry. It <clears> does. <throat> okay. Any other comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Any other business to come before the board? I will do the reports, Tony, and the executive committee. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right.
board member is or board is adjourned. All right, I'll call the executive committee uh, to order. Um, any public comment? Gwen, anything? No? Okay. Um, you have the summary of the um, August 5th meeting. Entertain a motion it be approved. So moved. Your second. Second. Oh, I'm not on that committee. I'm sorry. You are now. I am now, but yeah, you are. I wasn't at that meeting. <coughs> I was. I can second. Okay, got a second. Any comments? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm sorry. I'm looking ahead, trying to figure out what to report on. All right, Tony, your turn. See? You're coming. <laughs> um, projects are going well. Uh, Heritage Park Phase 1 construction is done. We've opened, had, had an event there that we'll continue to discuss what future phases will bring, but Heritage Park is a completed Phase 1 project. The plaza at City Center is still on track to be completed this month. Uh, uh, the uh, the important part, the waterproofing part, is pretty much complete. They have a couple of spots they had to go back and uh, resaw some of the expansion joints and make that work, but that's that's going well. So that project is very close to being done. Our uh, project for public works is on track. They are uh, almost all under roof on all the buildings. We should be on track to move into the facility late spring, early summer, as planned. So that uh, and that is really shaping up to be a, be a pretty good compound. I think it's going to be impressive once we get uh, people out there and you can see what we've got to work with. The community <coughs> center project is under design. The report from Lowe's Design, the uh, architect, will be in January. They're about 50% through the drawings. They'll report to council. We'll, we'll uh, bring that up to date and we'll uh, see if we can't get that going. But we still expect to be able to go to bid on that one in, uh, in the spring. We were very pleased with the bond issue to finance that project. We got a 30-year term on the bonds at 2.75%, which is uh, about as good as I've ever seen in my career, so I'm very, very pleased with that. So those projects are all moving. In terms of street projects, our local paving's about done. We've got a few small streets and neighborhoods to get done, and we'll, we'll finish the local street uh, paving. In the spring, we will have the uh, City State project to uh, uh, take care of uh, West AJ from Crescent Center to uh, Morris Boulevard. That project should be paved in the spring, late spring probably. The other two state city comp, uh, STP projects are East Morris and Central Church Road. Both of those are probably two years out before we see pavement going down, but those are all moving. So a lot's going on, a lot of construction. Any questions at Tony? As far as the county goes, um, let's see. The county commission has approved to uh, enter into phase two of the design for the Justice Center jail project. Uh, the scope of it right now is about 650 beds, um, three courtrooms, clerk's office, uh, community service would be in the justice building. The commission also approved uh, bond issue of $20 million to finance West High School renovations and continue the planning of the Justice Center Jail project. That sale will uh, take place in January. Um, the Commission also has approved purchase of the Hale property on West 2nd North Street for the development of parking lot and office space. Uh, TCAT has been awarded a million dollar give grant by Governor Lee, so that's over the last, what, five years TCAT's received two LEAP grants and now the GIVE grant. And um, it involves six counties. The focus of it is expansion of work-based learning internships and teacher externships. There's already been about 60 school principals and system administrators from throughout the six county area have uh, completed industry tours. And uh, the idea is to get the administrators into the industries because, so that the interest in 
externships and, and those kind of things <clears throat> start at the top and filter down. And so uh, the response has been positive on that. Uh, high school students from Hamlin County have been hired at Dollywood uh, for the Hollywood holiday season. Uh, they're also working at three industries on co-op programs. Uh, high school students are. Um, qualifying deadline for the 2020 county elections is noon, December 12th. On the ballot is a highway superintendent, assessor of property, highway commission, county trustee, and the 5th and 14th district county commissioners. Uh, primaries are in March, general elections in August. Uh, the Census 2020 committee, it's in full gear. They're hiring people now. Uh, the local promotional campaign uh, will kick off uh, in January and February, and David Perkey's chairing that committee. And then the federal, or excuse me, the Veterans Memorial uh, on the courthouse lawn was dedicated on Veterans Day, and, and we're seeing an uptick in the demand for bricks now that it's in place. And, and it personally it exceeded my expectations. It looks very good. So, any questions? Uh, we talked about Rachel's helping with the census education issue. Been able to step up. She's on the committee. Okay. Lee Simkowski is leading that committee. Okay. So, yeah, Rachel's on the Okay. Right, Marshall? I'll let Jody start. So, we've talked a few times this meeting about a marketing video grant that we received. And luckily, this one, unlike many grants, had no match. So, $25,000 to produce this video. So, I'll let Jody show you that. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just loading. starting to really get rolling we're starting to see some prospects that may come along with them starting to look so most of these companies seem to be Turkish so that's a little different for our community we don't have a Turkish company so we've had one visit um, and probably another upcoming visit from a second one um, so the first visit went well they stayed almost a week um, so that was very good they could see a lot of our community and understand a lot of things that if you've never been to the US or this, this was their first visit to the US so just culturally how things are a little different. So they met with lawyers and accountants and you know a lot of services that they'll need once they get here. So that was really good. Um, McNeilis is moving in equipment right now and starting some of their hiring. So they're um, hopeful to make a sale before the end of the year. I don't know if they'll be producing parts or not, but David's hopeful. Um, but likely it'll be first, first of the year. But he's really pleased with the speed at which that happened. So for us, prospects generally take two to four years. Um, four years to make product, even five years from the time we start working with them. Usually for two years to three years, we'll get an announcement. Um, these guys announced what, back in March or April, and they'll be producing product by the end of the year. So that's a little different. Um, so that we wish they all moved that quickly. Who's the contract? Uh, Blaine Construction out of Knoxville. So, um, so that one's going well. Iatric is now just over 150 jobs, and they're hiring in 80 job waves. So every new line they add, they'll add 80 more positions. Um, so they're doing really well, and have kind of already been pushed for an expansion. They're kind of holding out on that. They said, "Let us get going before we blow out the wall of a building we just finished." Um, so that's that's going well. We talked about housing a lot, and I think. 
you know, for us, housing is going to be pretty important as we move forward. If we continue to recruit industries, we need those people living in our community um, for tax purposes and lots of other purposes. Grounded in industrial expertise and equipped with the latest technological advances, we propel business forward and I am the future. Here at the heart of American industry, we've mastered the art of living well. In Hamlin County, Tennessee, we're state of the art and works of art. We're heartfelt with pride and perseverance. Our highly respected Jody, just hit the download button and download it. And that way it's up to the right, top right corner of the screen, top far top right corner. Top right corner. Yep, yep. Yeah. And that way it'll, it don't have to. Uh, it won't let me. I've already know. tried, yeah. Yeah, you can pause it and see if it'll load up some. Is our Wi Fi or what? All right, so we talked about housing a little bit. Um, we mentioned this before. One developer is considering three properties. Um, we're pretty sure he'll at least pick one of those, and that would be for over 300 units. Uh, so that's nice. We do have the one developer doing the late construction, and he's also looking for some additional property to do up to 800 more units. Um, and then we've got a third smaller developer that's just purchased a parcel in the city looking at 28 starter homes, kind of in the 130 to 150 range. Um, so we hear that that's kind of a need, and especially to get some new stocks on the market in that range will be nice as well. Um, and then I'll let Jody talk a second about the Career Expo. Did I say that? Did I, I didn't say that right, did I? Career Ready Expo? Future, Future, Future Ready, Ready Expo. Expo. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> Got two of the three words. Right? Yeah. Yeah. This will be the second year um, I am on the committee planning the event. It's January the 15th. Um, it's a little bit earlier this year because we were trying to um, piggyback on the carpet being down. We had a lot of complaints last year about the dirt floor. So um, we're going to do that. That'll be right as school gets back in. Um, pretty much, but um, we're looking for a hundred exhibitors this year. I'm not sure where we're at on that. We have a committee meeting um, next week uh, to kind of go over where we're at on those. Um, we do, we're, we're doing them in clusters again. There'll be four clusters, um, advanced manufacturing, trade and industry, health and public safety, and then business and IT, which will include retail. Um, we've been working with Jamie Wyatt at Maurice's. Um, she has pulled in Leslie Westmoreland from the mall. So they're gonna try to um, engage several of the retailers in the mall to have some exhibits um, to show, you know, merchandising and the different aspects of retail, not just being a customer service representative or a cashier. Um, so we're trying to incorporate some different aspects this year. Um, I think even Chuck's working with um, a food truck as a business owner, a small business owner, to show that aspect of it. So um, we're really excited again this year to, to bring this. Um, it will include Hamlin County as well as Jefferson County this year. So, um, it's eighth graders. Eighth right? graders, yes. Uh, it will be a one day event again, um, depending on how successful we are in incorporating another county. We may each year try to add counties within our region, um, which will expand the days, of course. But we're going to see how this goes. Um, how the flow works, and, and then go from there. So and feedback. Correct me if I'm wrong. Feedback from last year, as far as participants, they were were they <clears throat> was the correct word be surprised at the interaction with the students. 
and the questions? I think for the most part, they were happy. Um, the business and IT section wasn't as hands-on, so um, they weren't quite as happy, I guess. But um, the other sections that had the more hands-on that really engaged the students, um, that's the key with eighth graders. You know, you're talking 13, 14 year olds who they don't want to stand and talk to you about what you do. They want to actually do something. So we're trying to help those folks um, with ideas. Um, a local bank didn't really have any ideas, so we kind of brainstormed with different things that they could do that might engage students, not just, you know, well, I do loans and here's the process, because <laughs> that's, that's a bit over their head at that point. So um, that's the intent is to have hands-on activities that really engage them and help them. At, and before they even get there, they do some of that um, career testing, for lack of a better word, that helps them figure out their interest and maybe their aptitude towards things. So, um, and I think they're kind of, you know, told to focus. Here's where your interest and your aptitude is, so this may be where you want to really focus. So if you, if you didn't have a chance to go by last year, go this year. It's, it's really neat. <laughs> Back on the housing for a minute. That's really critical from the city's perspective. The biggest source of revenue we have is sales tax, and that's because we've got this regional hub for people driving <coughs> shopping here. As we transition to more, you know, it's this Cyber Monday, people are clicking mouses, they're buying online, getting it delivered. So those stores <laughs> aren't generating the same sales they were. And um, <clears throat> the state has also made that problem a little more difficult for the city in the way they allocate those online sales sales tax receipts. They go to the location of the residence of the person making the order. Mm -hmm. So double whammy, the city is going to see a shrinking per person reduction in sales tax revenue just by the nature of changing the economy, changing state law. Which means if we don't have more residents living inside the city limits, our sales tax will go down and our ability to support industrial development, buying industrial land, developing parks will also diminish. Even if the money shifting to the county or the region, we're going to have to look at other kind of more regional buy-in of, of support of those things. It's got a, in a five, ten year window, things will look very different in terms of the ability of the city to support these functions if we don't do something pretty significant in the way that the, the community looks. So that's not just well, we would like to have them living here. There's a real uh, economic driver for the city in terms of what we can do for economic development if we don't get residents soon. And for that purpose, you know, Tony, what, what crossed my mind as you were explaining that is if we can start tracking, let's say, residential developments in or, uh, adjacent counties. I think and, that would be. You know, and, and then maybe we have to approach the adjacent counties for help fund economic development. If, right. You know, that kind of thing. Well, you know our workforce is coming from a very wide area. And it, we've always lived on the idea that those guys were shopping here when, when they, they came back. But if they're doing more and more online, those dollars are going to go to Granger County, and Cock County, and you know, Hawkins, Hancock. So uh, we'll see that, that loss of revenue from, from what we've got here. Because we've been working as a regional hub for so long, it's not going to be the same way as it was in the past. So it kind of makes your Walmart and your hard goods stores less valuable and your restaurants more valuable. The things where products consumed on site. Yeah. The, it makes, the, keeps those important. It does. That's a good point. Yeah. So it's just something to continue to watch, but that's, that is a concern that we've got. That's all I have. You want to try, try it again? <laughs> it's still, still loading. It really is a, a good video, I've good. seen it. Uh, the one thing that I'll mention, I mentioned before, because of the, the structure of the state funding, it does not mention Morristown, it's all Hamblin County. 
and I understand that because in many other counties there are multiple jurisdictions. But in our case, it would have been nice to have had a dual branded kind of promotional video. Is, is it, I mean, is it done? No changes? Yeah, I think that's the This problem. one is. Um, the Grounded in industrial expertise and equipped with the latest technological advances, we propel business forward with an eye on the future. Here at the heart of American industry, we've mastered the art of living well. In Hamlin County, Tennessee, we're state of the art and works of art. We're heartfelt. That's as far as it's going to go. That's all it's loaded. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sign that it stops on the kicks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We'll try again next time. I may have a better link. Yeah. I may good. have be able to download it next time. But it is good work. I'm up and very, very pleased. Yeah, for us not to have to pay for it, that's the nice thing. We get something free. That our old videos, if you all have seen them, were about eight minutes long. And it's your very typical flyover. This is Morristown, Tennessee, the home of business and industry. We have internet. We have computers. <laughs> it's yeah. if you sit in front of a prospect and show that it's it's not. It's like every other county had. Um, so this, this is a little different, and this is something nice. You can show them quickly. It's not eight minutes long, and you can kind of show your community quickly. So that's nice. We got my shiny buses in it too. Huh? Appreciate that. They they like they jumped ahead on us there, threw some buses in there. Yeah. So. Well, and we will have um, they're doing a how it's made for Colgate, and they are tweaking theirs quite a bit because um, of. So did Colgate pay for those? No, no. this is part of the package, um, and I'm assuming they'll do one for Rich Products as well, but I haven't seen that one yet. Um, and then we'll, we also get a PowerPoint template with some images and things that we can manipulate for future presentations. So it's, it, it's really good quality. I mean, it's, it's well produced. Um, they, they are pretty standard though. I mean, it's the same narrator for each county. They sort of say the same things. I mean, in a lot of ways, they say the same things, but they're 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 good videos. Any other questions, Marshall, Cody? <coughs> comments? Any other issues? All right. Honor to the motion. We adjourn. Honor.